with Anna Francis, the first age grouper across the line here at Shepherd in 70.3. Wednesday morning I had decided not to join the rest of my training group for an indoor bike session. I was going to try and get a, a little bit of a longer ride done and so I joined another couple of friends out on the road. Um, I think it was about 7am according to the phone call that I made to my mum. <laughs> um, I was heading south along Beach Road and a um, motorist driving a ute was coming in the opposite direction in the northbound lane and he turned right into the street that I was passing and uh, I t-boned him um, and that was just the information that was given to me from the um, passenger that was in the car. I don't remember anything, apparently I did try to drop before I hit the car but I didn't make it. I did look at my Garmin a couple of months later and noticed that my speed went from 35 k's an hour to nothing, so yeah, it was, I was travelling pretty fast um, and obviously so were they because they didn't even really pay attention to what was happening on the road, so um, the first thing I do remember was waking up in the emergency department and apparently it was five hours later and the first thing I do remember is the nurse coming over to me saying, can you show us the three pictures that you uh, we pointed out to you earlier? And I said to her, I don't think you've actually shown me that before. And she actually said to me, we've shown you this about six times so far. So that was quite shocking. Um, the fact that I just had no recollection of the ride. I had very limited recollection of the day prior to the event. Um, and yeah, I think my mum had been in the emergency department before my dad got there. I can't remember any of that, so yeah, it's really shocking to not, or to just completely miss a period of life, or a day of life really, but yeah. I went to my physio uh, on the Monday after I was discharged because of the pain that I was experiencing in my hamstring. Um, and I, he took one look at it and said, <clears throat> you need to go and get an ultrasound straight away. It's, it's looking pretty ugly. I had just a big black bruise down the whole back of my hamstring and um, he said it was likely that it was torn. Um, and when I went in to get the ultrasound, the technician said to me, uh, said to his student actually, that there was a mass that was meant to be you know, around my bottom, but he found it halfway down my leg, and <laughs> I knew Kona was over, and and just burst into tears knowing that that was gone. There probably has been a change to my personality. I'm, I'm quieter. I'm much quieter. Whether or not that's because I can't find the words, or whether it's because I don't, I don't feel confident contributing to a conversation. I'm not really sure. But conversation doesn't flow as freely, and I do have to really think about the things that I'm saying before they come out of my mouth. The. Obviously my biggest disabling, disabling symptom is my fatigue um, and also I guess there have been some physical limitations which have held me back. It did take a long time to get back into cycling and running. Um, swimming I was able to get into quite quickly so I, I switched my focus to the open water swimming season. As soon as I could get back on the bike, I did. Um, I have a lot of pain 
in my bottom where the hamstring has been reattached. Running, it did take quite some time to get back into. I was not even able to move my leg past um, vertical for a while, so even walking was a real challenge in Hawaii. So I knew that once I was able to put some consistent weeks of training together in swim, bike and run, that it would be worth setting myself a goal. Sunshine Coast I entered because I'm all about destination races and I love the sun, I love, um, I love holidays, so I've, I've chosen that race because of those things. I've also chosen to do Ironman Malaysia um, in November this year, that will be a really exciting time as well. And yeah, both of those I chose because I needed to give training purpose and um, I know that if I can keep myself occupied with those things and, and feel like there is achievement from a physical point of view, then that's going to keep me much more mentally satisfied as well. Um, things with the brain have been much more challenging, so yeah, the physical has definitely kept me persevering when I've needed to think about that. I guess it's hard to have an expectation of what I should do compared to what I was capable of. I know that it's there somewhere, I haven't got it at the moment, but I, I guess I need to let go of that expectation because this is far from an ideal preparation to what I've had before. And the goal for Sunshine Coast is to get out there and enjoy the race and know that I'm back out there having a great time and the thing that I miss most even before I did New Zealand because I had a period of injury then was that sense of achievement finishing a race whether it's an Olympic distance whether it's a half Ironman or an Ironman it's it's all the same to me crossing the finish line is what should count and for this one the finish line is all I'm looking at You always need to look at the positives um, that are happening in your life. If you continue to focus on the things that are not going well, then everything becomes negative. And I'm very good at giving that advice. It's not always that easy to actually take it and yeah, use it to yourself. <laughs> I don't believe that makes